Hi, I'm Rob Cosman. Welcome to my shop. This summer, which would be July of 2014, we are teaching or offering hand tool workshops just outside of Niagara Falls in uh, Ontario, Canada. And we're doing both training the hand, which is where we cover all the basic fundamental hand skills, and then we're offering one advanced class. And uh, I'm putting forth a new project. I've got to get approval from those who are already registered for the class, but we still have some room in it too. We were going to do a shaker two-step, and the idea behind this class is to be able to incorporate the skills that you learned in the training the hand workshop and then actually use them to build a piece of furniture. But I found some of the things a lot more interesting. So I'm going to get Dave to come in a little bit closer. This is a uh, writing desk, and the idea is that it provided someone with a slanted, nice surface in order to write letters. So you open up here. And this would be where you would keep your stamps and your pens and erasers and whatever. Actually, back then, there'd be the ink bottles and the whole bit. You have to modify that for today. And then this one opens up and lays down on the desk. Gives you a nice leather writing surface. And then this one is hinged, and this is where you would keep your writing paper. Now, I built this to the actual dimensions of one of these right lap desks, writing desks that were found in uh, there that you can find in... Um, museum in Augusta, Maine. And I was really surprised at the dimensions because I thought this was too small and I don't know what kind of paper you'd get in there, certainly not eight and a half by 11. But it was back then, so. Anyway, um, I did a few things on this that I would change. Number one, I used textured leather. It should have been a much more um, a smooth leather to provide a nice writing surface, but that can be changed. My biggest problem was in finding good hardware and I paid quite a bit of money for these solid brass hinges but wow it's as if the people who make them never actually use them I had to drill them out numerous times in order to get the heads of the screws to sit flush because if they don't the hinge won't close so there was a lot of work done on those and then you can't get screws this small so I had to take the screws and cut them and point the ends and the whole bit anyway let me show you some of the uh, features uh, and some of the uh, skills that we would need in order to build this now this one is out of walnut, and you could certainly have your choice of woods. And then I'm also going to go over the tool list that we need. So, all of these breadboard pieces, this one and this one, have a, um, it's easier to show on this one, I guess, tongue and groove joint. Maybe actually it shows better on this one. And that, um, you've got cross grain construction there, but it's small enough that I don't think it's going to be a problem. So, you're cutting. A groove obviously in this piece and then you have to cut a tongue on the other piece and that's on both the lid the outside lid and the inside one and then of course we have it wouldn't be a rub cosmon project if it didn't have dovetails so we've got three dovetails on all four corners I got dusty hands um, we've got a groove cut in the bottom now I I used solid pine on this and in retrospect I probably or in hindsight I probably would have gone with walnut just to keep it all consistent but Anyway, this doesn't get seen that much. So that panel is made to fit in a groove. Uh, of course, there's mortising hinges because these have to sit in there nice and flush. So there's four hinges to mortise. And what else do we have? We've got a rabbit cut. Uh, there's a rabbit cut on this lid and on this one so that when this one closes and you're holding onto it, it prevents that one from flopping open. There are dados that will be cut with a small crosscut saw in order, to in order to house these dividers and also this divider. I used the rasp to cut this little finger recess and I used a carving gouge in order to cut that little recess so that when you cut your finger down in there you can pull that up. The idea is to, can we get this done in a um, 60 hour week and you'd be surprised at how much time will get consumed in something like this. Certainly think we could get the outside box done, might not get all the interior done, but anyway, we'll go to work on it. So that's the project, and like I said, you can use whatever wood that you want. Now let me go through the tool list, if you can ignore my phone that we forgot to shut off. Uh, most of these tools are what we would use in the earlier class, which is the training the hand. Probably can get away without a scrub plane. There's not a lot of dimensioning in this, and that's always been the problem at the, the uh, projects that we've chosen in the past there was a fair bit of dimensioning and that took up a lot of the time. I think once you learn how to dimension a board it's just a matter of practice to get better so we can probably it's nice to be able to forego a lot of extra heavy dimensioning so those pieces in there are relatively small 
which means you can get away with a jack plane and perhaps you want a smoother. You're going to need a shoulder plane for cutting the rabbits and I threw in the skew block plane as well. Probably new to the list would be a, cu a couple of rasps and uh, if you don't have them I'd have enough there to borrow and it's not something you're going to be using a whole lot so we can get away if there's a couple there for everyone to use. I, I make these planes and I loan them out. Now this is a little uh, uh, plane that cuts a small eighth inch groove and that's what we use to cut that rabbit. Uh, not the rabbit, sorry, but the uh, the groove that mates against the tongue on that tongue and groove joint on the two parts that have breadboard ends. So I'll provide that. You're going to need a Yankee drill or a, a egg beater type drill, but you're going to need some small holes, pilot holes done for the screws. A selection of chisels, not a lot, a couple of screwdrivers. I find you really need two mark marking gauges because of the uh, Oh, things like mortising for the hinges, you really want to be able to have two different settings because you're going to be using them back and forth as you're going and cleaning out that mortise. A small router plane is indispensable. Uh, what else have we got here? Well, I was just going to say, the dovetail tools you're going to want, which is your dovetail saw, your crosscut saw, your, uh, your uh, fret saw, your dividers, your dovetail marking knife, dovetail marker, square, mallet. You need your sharpening gear. I've, only, I've condensed mine down just to two stones, the diamond, the trend diamond plate that's got the 1000 and the 300 grit on the opposite side and my 16,000 Shapton with the steel rule for the Charlesworth ruler trick. Uh, you need a small crosscut saw. Uh, a couple of steel rules come in handy. I have this little squirrel tail. I find that really convenient for cutting small radiuses or chamfers on small pieces. It's just easy to hold on to so if you've got something like that. I've got an awl. Um, when, you're, when you're drilling those pilot holes for the screws and the hinges, you want them to be precise because you don't want them moving the hinge away from the mortise. You want to actually pull it tight. So I always set my hole just a little bit on the inside of center so that, uh, as I said, as that screw tightens down and that countersunk head pulls on the, on the hinge, it'll pull it in tight to the back wall. I going to say questions, but you can't obviously give me questions. But if you do have any, send them to um, go to our form on the online workshop and uh, we'll answer them. So this is the project. And uh, just so that you can have the dimensions. And I may play around with this. I thought this might just need to be a little bit bigger. But as it is, it's 12 and a quarter inches wide. It is 9 inches deep. At its highest, it's 2 and 3 eighths of an inch tall. And what else? The writing surface. Now they had this writing surface was divided by this piece in here, and I really don't know how you could get around it. But you know, I can see writing a letter and then end up hitting that. But we'll figure out something. The writing surface is 11 and a half inches by nine inches, and it's no problem getting the leather. Anyway, all right. Let me know what you think. You can email me directly, Rob at robcosman.com, and. Uh, We'll take care of you. All right, we'll see you in the shop.